Greetings, this is Sean, and today I'm going to be showing how I make my miniature daybed workbench. This is actually a project um, that I had seen in an article, and here in a little bit I'm going to show you the actual article from a 1952 Popular Mechanics uh, magazine article. And um, it's basically a hide-a-bed, or it's a, actually a bed that hides a full working... Um, fully functional workbench. It's got the tool chest that comes out there, stores inside, it's got a little work surface there, and something I don't show and probably won't actually build, this is just a model mock-up, but uh, on the underneath side there, uh, there's actually supposed to be some straps, and here you're going to see a picture of it here in just a second. There it is. See, it looks like a bed, and you use, this is the actual article, but um, you put leather straps to hold your tools, just like that. And this one actually shows two, two uh, removable tool chests, but I'm not going to make the second one. Anyway, um, that was all I had to go on. So I created my own little version of it here. And there's my drawing and all my scratches, uh, chicken scratch, showing all my different measurements and whatnot that I do on uh, SketchUp. And um, so I am going to attempt to build this little daybed in miniature. Now I'm actually considering building these full size if I can get enough interest in people who would want to have one. They're, like I say, they'd be great for a, uh, a uh, small apartment, small studio apartment, or a basement, or someplace where you don't have a lot of room but you would like to have a work surface. So that's the idea behind this. And uh, there's actually an, another one, another version that was in that same article, but which I'm going to probably build next. And anyway, you'll get to see that uh, when I get that one done, probably in the next few days or so. Anyway, here I'm just measuring. I've actually got all of the pieces cut out, and um, so now I'm just basically measuring and putting together, you know, putting everything together. So these are, this is the uh, uh, the top part of it, where the bed mattress sits. That's the underneath side of it. And here I'm just making sure I've got everything, like I said, measured out and centered up the right way. Those are <clears throat> support struts. I think they call them battens, B-A-T-T-O-N-S. Um, but... Uh, just to help give some extra support for the top. Uh, something else I am not going to do, I'm not going to be painting this, so all of my paint lines are still going to be there. Hey, there's my T-square that I made. Uh, check out the link I'm going to put up there for how, to, how I built that T-square. Uh, anyway, um, now I'm putting doing the bottom of it. Those are just... Uh, some support beams, for lack of a better term, joists, floor joists for the bottom of it. Now, if I were building this in true scale, those would be three-quarter inch plywood that I'd be using, and those would be two-by-fours, but um, so I have to compensate for the small. Those are the sides, and there are supposed to be wheel, uh, caster wheels that are set on the bottom so you can move it around easily, which I'm obviously not going to do, um, but I am going to try and build this as true to form as possible. And here I'm just trying to set where all my side struts are going to be holding up the sides, and gluing those on. What I'm trying to do is line up those beams that are on the floor with the beams that are on the side uh, so that they're sitting on top of each other. One, The one is sitting on top of each other. And the reason I have the uh, 
that board underneath there you'll see here in a second is um, those beams aren't actually sitting on the floor they're according to the, the drawings and whatnot they that's uh, there's some uh, the casters are sitting on those beams but um, I went ahead and you know did it the way it was on the drawings but anyway that's just to provide some extra space for the beams instead of the beam sitting on the floor the side walls actually sit on the floor which I end up getting crooked and it's kind of slanted anyway but anyway here I'm using my traditional playing card to make sure everything's square and that's the side there that didn't get put on correctly and ends up being uh, see I forgot to put that board back underneath so now that side panel is actually sitting too high and those beams are actually sitting on the ground <coughs> so oops I like these little bottles I found found these little bottles at Hobby Lobby for squeezing out glue in little areas you can also put uh, paint in them or um, anything else liquid that needs to be squeezed into a small area they were pretty good. Got six of them for about, I think they were about four or five bucks, something like that. Tacky glue. And I put a lot of tacky glue on there, which I shouldn't have did. But anyway, so I'm just cleaning up the excess. And I actually missed one spot, but yeah, no big deal. Now I'm figuring out the lid, and uh, you'll find out later on that I made a mistake with the hinges on the lid, so I skipped over my mistake. I put the hinges on the top part of it right, but I didn't put it on the back part correctly, so you'll see that here. Anyway, um, there's the little hinges I'm going to be using. And what I'm doing is I'm lining up where the hinges are going to go. I'm going to use four of them. And those marks that you see, I'm going to cut out the slots for the hinge part to fit in so that they're nice and flush. But when I did it originally, um, I had the hinge on the outside of the box, of the side wall. And they should have been on the inside. And I goofed, and when I went to test it the first time uh, they all popped right off so I had to redo it so anyway they're on the top correctly they're supposed to be sitting on top just like they are like you see them however um, when I glued them I supposed to glue them to the inside of the box not the outside of the box so you'll see that and I'll, I'll point it out here in a minute when you, when you actually s when you see the my goof I'll admit to my failures. I don't have a problem with that. See here, you can see I'm getting them all lined up. Then I'll cut away here in a second. There's my cutaway. See the little the glue <laughs> spots on the front. That's where they, that was actually the back. So anyway, here what I'm doing is I'm cutting into those um, struts or battens as they're called. Uh, for where the shelf is going to sit. Now, originally the shelf um, in the original drawing was meant to fold up and you actually have legs that are attached to the underneath side of the uh, of the surface. So when you fold it down, the legs fold down as well and it provides a nice sturdy surface. Well, I don't have hinges small enough to be able to do that, so I'm improvising with this, but if I do build them true to form, true to scale, then um, they will have that extra support. So anyway, I, I kind of compensate by putting in um, some extra arms that hold that up.
Here I'm contemplating how I'm going to do a support bracket, which I end up just using some quarter inch or eighth inch by eighth inch, as you can see, dowel rod for arms. Just like that. One on each side. top was a little bit warped. Actually, it was because the sides were uneven. I had a little bit of gap on the right-hand side there. And also, those battens there were uh, hitting the wall. I, I put a lip on the front, which wasn't in the original drawing, so I'd be able to lift it up real quick. And I was measuring off of the original part, and I forgot about the lip being there, so I had to cut off that extra to uh, compensate for that lip so that the battens would go down into the box. Here I'm cutting out a seat. It's a one inch by one inch seat, which is a one foot by one foot seat in real life, which is, yeah, it's about the size of a small stool. But uh, that's what it called for in the drawing. That was one of the few dimensions where I actually got was a 12 inch by 12 inch uh, seat. And the original seat folded down and had two legs that folded out and like I say, I don't have hinges that small, so I'm compensating by gluing it in place. Gluing the legs all down, and it's a permanent feature. You can't move it around. struts on the inside or um, yeah here I'm just checking to make sure that the uh, it's deep enough so it doesn't uh, interfere with the, the batten coming down over the top of it when it closes just like that now I'm getting ready to <clears throat> I forgot to record it but the recording of the uh, toolbox so I apologize for not doing that but um, if you watch my daybed, I think it's my daybed one where I, I made drawers and and uh, whatnot. It's basically just making a, a little box with drawers. So, uh, but and I also forgot to record the those putting those on. Here I'm making the mattress for the top, and I had put some small. Um, rails to hold the mattress in place and I, I didn't record that either I didn't think it was that important but anyway I, <clears throat> I did happen to get the mattress recorded and so that's what I'm doing here I'm just using foam board to simulate the inside and I'll glue those together this is a twin size bed that I'm making and there's my jar of sand and I have this calico design fabric, and I use that kind of filler batting for the mattress. It makes it look lumpy instead of using the wool batting. So, yeah, it's just going to be a real simple, basic uh, mattress. Nothing fancy. I do make one mistake when when doing this. Uh, I cut off a corner and I shouldn't have. And anyway, tuck it all in there and pull it nice and tight. Glue it down. I'm using Fabri-Tac, by the way. That corner right there, I should not have cut that off, but it's okay. It's not going to get seen anyway because it's going to get put glued into the top of the mattress anyway, or the top of the workbench. So, 
Anyway, just like that. Anyway, back to this. There's my toolbox that I made with some drawers. And uh, I didn't... I uh, Originally, I made that to where it was tall enough to fit flush with the top of the sides. However, I had no handle to be able to lift it up and out. So that's what I'm doing here is I'm making a little handle that will go on top of the chest. But I had to cut the chest down small enough to be able to accommodate for the top of... Or for that handle to fit in place. So now it fits down a little bit lower. Which is fine. And then the other side, I'm just, instead of making another one of those, I'm just making a small bin to put items in. Like if you wanted to have like a vice or something big that you wanted to get, you know, put on your, uh, a small mini lathe or, you know, a sander or something could fit down into that box and be closed up with that lid. And that lid, uh, I did something similar with this. I had a hard time with the hinges. Uh, putting them on the wrong way, of course, which I've got them on that way okay, but I... Anyway, uh, it's hard to explain. But what I end up doing is I fill that little uh, open space, with, as you can see there, with extra boards to come up to the top so that I can set the shelf on top of it to glue because the, the hinges need to be glued to the inside and it was too hard to do without it being on there because it, I don't know, I don't understand why I had such a hard time with it. But this was a lot easier, but coming up with all those little pieces of wood to fill that cavity was something else. Anyway, so I'm just gluing it and then setting it inside, aside and one of the hinges was nice and stiff so I was able to keep it in place while I was able to uh, with, let the super glue dry and got it all glued up and take all the wood out that that space could even be used for storing wood <laughs> anyway make sure making sure that's all glued in place and I did end up getting a little bit crooked it was uh, but I it just ended up, as you can see there, at the top there's a big gap, so I had to compensate by trimming off the one side so that it would close. I was not going to take that apart and try it again. So, anyway, got it all normal, and there's the final product. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this. Have a better day, as I always say. <laughs>